Azzolo, Italy, a tiny hilltop town where technology is measured in terms of millennium. The fountain in the plaza is still fed by an antique Roman aqueduct. But inside a local factory, the technology is state of the art, and the goal is a constant search to find new ways to protect those who enjoy a twist of the throttle. Azzolo is home to Alpine Stars, a company whose focus was originally on the trek and not the track. Alpine Stars as a company was founded in 1963, uh, initially building ski boots and mountain hiking boots. We're only a few miles from the Alpine Dolomites here, so there's a heritage for mountain climbing and trekking. But also there's, uh, there's a strong motorcycle fraternity here. On the first floor of the Alpine Stars building, there's what looks like a high fashion Italian showroom. It's open to the public. Except for helmets, you can find anything you need to protect yourself on a motorcycle. But in the basement, which is off limits to visitors, it's not fashion but function that matters. This is where all Alpine Star riding gear is designed and tested. They call this the walk meter machine, where boots are put through 100,000 cycles, the equivalent of walking 35 miles. But the test is really about how the boot will perform when riding. Will it hold up to the stress and strain of a sudden major impact? Obviously, the foot is a complex piece of physiological anatomy, and it's very important to stop the force of an impact being transmitted in a very pure form straight to the joints of the foot or, or up to the knee. Absorbing the force of an impact and spreading that energy out away from the body are fundamental concepts for all protective riding gear. Here, a new back protector is being tested by repeatedly dropping a five kilogram weight and measuring where the energy from the impact goes. This test will be repeated hundreds of times. The initial impact uh, spread is important because it prevents the actual impact energy being directed straight through the protector into the rider's body. The back protector is really a two-part system, using a hard shell over a soft padded liner. The profile of this protector is very thin. It also is allowed to move naturally with the rider in the right direction, but not to hyperextend in the wrong direction backwards. The back protector uses man-made thermoplastic and gels to protect the rider. But when it comes to the actual riding suits, leather is still the material of choice. Very thick leather. Because motorcycling is dynamic and in the event of an accident, you know, there's a lot of abrasion, a lot of impact. We specify 1.4 to 1.2 millimeter thickness of leather. It's considerably thicker than the average fashion garment because when the time comes, it has to go through a much more rigorous test of its properties. Clearly, we can't have test riders being asked to fall off motorcycles as part of the testing procedure. So here we have a very scientific way of understanding exactly how the leather performs should a rider slide down the road. The abrasion test machine runs pads of sandpaper over different leather samples in a scientifically controlled environment to make certain the leather will provide enough protection in the event of a crash. Surprisingly, unlike the fashion world where the right colors sell, in riding gear, the right colors can save your life. In treating the leather with different colors, it can actually affect the performance of the, of the leather. A simple example is the red and the silver both passed the test, while the blue and the green, in this case, failed the test. The next key to protection is to make sure all the seams in a leather riding suit are strong enough. For that, they use another machine, 
that stresses each test seam until it finally fails. So here we're seeing the actual trace for the force being submitted to the material in the machine. In the event of an accident, a rider coming off a motorcycle, um, a very sudden large force is often subjected to the seam. On the monitor here you can see the force readout that the seam and the material is being subjected to. A thousand newtons on the scale here equates roughly to 500 pounds of, of force. So we're looking for that as the minimum standard that we require. So here, in this case, this sample broke above that, so we've exceeded our own in-house standards. Over the past five to ten years, such high-tech lab work has produced riding gear that has significantly reduced the number and severity of injuries to both riders and racers. Today, it's safer than ever to twist the throttle.